Chuck, when was the last time you had an airport? I, I don't know. A couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago, maybe. All right. I, I want to give you things to notice on your next trip. Because otherwise, it's just a drag to go through and TSA and everything. Just some things to notice and to think about. You mean things like we've become a slovenly country that looks like <laughs> we're going to the damn bathroom in the middle of the night when we travel? Put some clothes on, people. Real clothes. No, they, they got okay? their pajamas on because they want to sleep on the plane. Cut them some slack. No, no. Right. So, here you go. So, the first thing, you know, at the, at the TSA... You got the the X-ray machine, right? You got the X-ray machine. Okay. I just want to alert you of something. There was a day, and I'm old enough to remember, before anything got X-rayed. You know why? Because nobody had an X-ray machine to do it. And in the 1960s, there was a spate of of hijackings. Many of them were to Cuba, because we didn't we our diplomatic ties had been broken off, uh, and. Because the Cuba were like, they were commies, right? They were sympathizers with the Soviet Union. And they were in our hemisphere. And so we didn't have planes to Cuba. So if someone wanted to get fly to Cuba, they had to hijack a plane. <laughs> so I, I don't mean to laugh, but the uh, hijackings to Cuba were like common. So Congress right. said, we got to stop this. The only way we can do it is maybe we can x-ray your luggage. Okay? So does anyone have an x-ray machine? that we can just drag into here and do this, right? That's not so large like you find in the hospital. Oh, yeah. Astrophysicists of the early 1970s had just miniaturized X-ray detectors to put into satellites to observe the universe in the X-ray part of the spectrum because black holes and, and matter swirling in down the throat of a black hole just before it goes to die, radiates X-rays. And we, we calculated this, and we knew this, and we said, we're going to find black holes in the universe. We need an X-ray telescope. Well, the X-ray machines are huge. We ha then we got to make them smaller to fit into the, into the, this, the, the, orbit, the orbiting satellite. And so a company called American Science and Engineering, based in Cambridge, Massachusetts, okay, pioneered small x-ray detectors, and then they got tapped by the government and say, will you bring those into every airport in the country, every international airport? And thus was born x-ray detectors at airports because of astrophysicists. I'm just now, telling were you. Any, were any of these astrophysicists also hijacking planes? Because I can see a connection. <laughs> oh, oh mm. the conspiracy theories. Yes. Okay. And one of the leaders of that was a guy named Ricardo Giacconi, and uh, he was also a professor, uh, a scientist up at the Harvard College Observatory, the Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory. Today, it's just called the Center for Astrophysics. And when I was an undergraduate there, I worked in his group, the X-ray group. We did some things, all right? And he would later be given the Nobel Prize for pioneering X-ray, opening up an entire new window on the universe x-ray astronomy so and another cool thing is uh, i would later be tapped by the white house to serve on a committee to to give out the presidential medal of science okay and oh. this is under the george w bush white house so i'm there and we get invited to the ceremony so I, i'm ready to enter the white house and he's oh we we awarded it to him He'd already gotten the Nobel Prize. Dude, give him the Presidential Medal of Science, okay? Right, so, exactly. So he's coming into little, the- A little bit of a letdown. Uh, right, I know, I know. But so he comes in, all right, and he's going through this, this, there's this this house you have to walk through before you get to the White House, and that's where all the security measures are. So he's walking through, and I can't help but notice the White House is using an American science and engineering x-ray detector, <laughs> which- this guy invented it. It was his company. It's his company. And I thought we cool. told we have come full circle here. There yeah. it is. That, uh, I, that, that's so funny. It's like the guy who made the thing that you're using for security is the ultimate security risk. <laughs> because he would know what. Because he knows all the back doors if there is any. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
because he invented he knows what yeah exactly that that you would know? be the case yeah, if he's using yeah. his machine he'll know right. how to he'll get know by how his to own get machine. around anything in his own inventions you know if, if, if he had come to the white house when i was head of security i've been like nah get that guy up against the wall full pat down full <laughs> pat down cavity search <laughs> that's right everything we gotta make sure this guy knows how to hide stuff believe me <laughs> so anyway so when you go through they're not as and e detectors anymore but that was the birth of that entire movement and it was astrophysicist serving our needs happened to also serve the needs of the government by the way i retell that story uh in, in my book um accessory to war the okay. unspoken alliance between astrophysics and the military and more broadly it's between astrophysics and security hey i'm adrian solgard and i reinvented the suitcase i love to travel but i can never stay organized you know when you get to your hotel, you open your suitcase and everything goes everywhere? That's why we created the Carry-On Closet, a revolutionary suitcase that keeps you organized on the go. The Carry-On Closet has a patented built-in shelving system, compression straps to save space, and an even one Time Magazine Best Inventions of the Year. Oh, and for every suitcase sold, we save 229 plastic bottles from going into our ocean. Learn more at Solgard.co. So, Chuck, so the interesting thing about x-rays, we think of them as penetrating through objects right special kind of light energy yes but it's not as weird as you think okay okay you realize visible light penetrates glass <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> that's why windows are made of glass uh, okay i mean listen i know that that was a scientific stretch but uh Okay, but but wait a minute, but let's let's keep going here. Do you know that glass blocks x-rays and high energy light? Okay? All right, now we're doing something. So, not all substances are transparent to all bands of light. That's okay. all I'm trying to say. I got you. Okay? So, right. microwaves, which is what your phone use to communicate, right? They clearly pass through walls because when yep. you go indoors, you can still use your cell phone. I mean, unless, of course, you have Sprint. I mean, no. oh, stop. I mean, then, you know, give it up. Oh, stop. You know what I mean? Like, oh my God. How, hey, they go Sprint as a sponsor of Star Talk. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm roaming in the kitchen, but not in the living room. What? Okay. So, uh, so microwaves pass through walls that are otherwise opaque to you. So the fact that x-rays go through like luggage and things and human flesh, uh, you know you know what x-rays don't really go through? They don't really go through your bones. I was about to say, why don't you, if you really want to fool an x-ray, just make everything out of human bones. No, 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 so no. So it doesn't, does not go through bones, so bones cast a shadow on what it is they're trying to view. Ah, so See? really what you're, you're not seeing the bone. You're themselves. not seeing the bone. You're seeing the fact that you're the x-ray went everywhere else except but, the bones. Exactly. Right. So it's like when you stand in front of the sun and you do a puppet, you know, uh, on the ground, a, a, a shadow puppet, you're, it's really just the, you know, the, it's not the image of your hand, it's the absence of your hand. Correct. It is, right. it, it is, it is, you're giving meaning to the absence of sunlight. Right. Where your hands had blocked the photons from exactly. hitting the sand. Right. So, so, so that's, that's what's happening. What, in it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's and, cool. And so that's cool. When Wilhelm Röntgen uh, discovered x-rays and he put his hand in front of it and he saw that there the, he saw the bones, he could barely see the flesh because the, the, it, it went right through his flesh. Okay. Right. When you're looking out a window, you're not looking at the window. You're looking at what's beyond the window. Okay. So he's looking at, he doesn't see the, he sees the bones because the x-rays were absorbed by the bones. And he also think I saw his wedding ring or something, which absorbed even more x-rays. And that was like pitch black rather than sort of grayish. And please do not ask why his wedding ring was made out of human bone. <laughs> Stop. Stop. He's a weird, kinky man, okay. that Wilhelm. <laughs> Wilhelm Röntgen. In fact, in all the rest of the world, they call it Röntgen rays rather than X-rays. Um, but oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, point is, uh, X-rays are useful for looking through your luggage and finding things that you might make a weapon out of, typically out of metal. But they will not find 
weapons made out of things that are not metal and are otherwise transparent to plastic, like um, a plastic gun, right? If you make a plastic gun, it's not, it's not going to find it in the same way it would reveal a, a, a metal, metal gun. gun. So here's what big you time, can do now. There's controversy on that too about yeah, uh, printable guns. Correct, correct. So here's an interesting thing you can do. Uh, like I, like you said, like I noted, um, the bone does not completely block the x-rays. It just blocks more x-rays than your flesh does. So it casts its own mild shadow in the photograph. Okay. If you have different frequencies of light and you interplay them, you can see what the trend line is in the thing's attempt to absorb it or not. And once you do that, you're better at detecting what could be in the suitcase if you move the frequencies back and forth. But what they also do is they attach color. This is the literal use of false color, where you attach a color to the edges of signals that are shown up in the image, in the X-ray image. Because your eye picks up color much better than it picks up uh, tiny changes in, in a grayscale shadings, right? right? So if, if I say anything grayer than this level, make it red, and anything less gray than that, make it blue, your eye, pip, boom! I see red and blue as two completely separate things rather than as the continuum that it is. So the folks back there, the TSA, they have a fascinating task ahead of them to identify objects and shapes and, right. and, and, and highlight them in ways that it makes it easy for the person looking, through your, looking at your luggage rather than harder. Yeah, yeah, that's that's super cool. And I wonder, do they assign a special color uh, to uh, sex toys? Because <laughs> they tend to somehow find them all the time. I've never seen this ever happen. Um, is, is this you trying to pull sex toys through the security? Is this? I, I'm just saying. I don't know how every time it. You, you heard know, that, that this happened. That's what I, I hear. It. That somehow they're just like, got to check that one, and it's just like, <laughs> nope, just another sex toy. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Everything's great. <laughs> All good. No this reason to be alarmed. Here. Just this another tech here. sex toy. Sorry, you're free to go with your <laughs> sex toy. <laughs> uh, and by the way, those the those flappy things at the entrance with your luggage into the machine. Yes. They're like have heavy metal particles in them, so the X-rays don't come out. So don't reach in there, because it's trying to shield you from the X-rays that would otherwise uh, leak out of that hole. Nice. There, there you go. Well, there that is, is super. Oh, I, I have to tell you, I will never look at the x-ray machine again this, the this same way. This is what I'm way. saying. And I want you to think of astrophysicist when you do. I, and I, I will now, which I have never done before. <laughs> I can say that with X-rays a... are just another band of light that comes to us from the depths of space that humans on Earth with excellent engineering has exploited for all manner of social, cultural, geopolitical purposes. Look at that. Thank there you, you Wilhelm. <laughs> okay. All right, Chuck, that's all we have time for this explainer. Oh, okay. Uh, X-rays in the universe and X-rays at the airport. Chuck, always good to have you. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson here, finishing up yet another explainer for Star Talk. As always, keep looking up. <laughs>